Okay, so welcome back. So we've just been talking to Sarley here and trying to wrap up some of these synthesis things and whatnot. Just trying to just kind of get caught up with it so we don't fall too far behind and then get like a million things we need to synthesize and whatnot. So let's make this thing. Colony ship figure. Whoa, this is a model of the Sorel. It's pretty realistic. You're right, there's a lot of detail. Sarley, did you have a model building hobby? Be very careful when you handle that, you two. Uh, don't worry, we won't break it. I'd hope so. If that broke, we'd all end up in outer space. Out in space. Uh, here we go again. Sarley's talking about big disasters. Uh, anyway, let's move away from it a little bit. So, what was this? If this breaks, we'd all end up in space? Yes, we would. Not just us, but every living thing on the Sorel, too. Uh, hey, Cass, could this model Sorel be... You were thinking the same thing? I was kinda doubtful, but... If we do something to this model Sorel, does the same thing happen in reality? Exactly. Good job figuring it out. You look like you don't believe me. Well, you know, it sounds like something from a fairy tale. How could I believe it? Yeah, I can't believe it either. I see. I suppose that's expected. This thing just looks like an ordinary model. There's no way it could. Oh no. Delta, did you just poke the model? Huh? Oh, is, is this an earthquake? That's impossible. We're on the Sorel right now. It was because Delta poked the model. No way, it's just gotta be a coincidence, uh... Delta, I've got a really bad feeling right now. My nose is itchy, uh... Ah! Choo! Ah! What's with this wind? It was Delta's sneeze because he faced the model. You're kidding, right? This stuff is seriously happening in reality? I told you right off the bat. Why are you so calm? We can't carry this around with us or leave it anywhere. If we don't burn it and dispose of it, we'll all... If you did that, the Sorel would be engulfed by Hellfire. Then we need to find a way to destroy the model before the effect can happen? It seemed like there were a few seconds between doing something to the model and it happening in reality. That's impossible. It's true that there are a few seconds of lag before the effects appear in reality. However, that's just the time between this model sending a signal to the Sorel and causing it to happen. Any action done to the model is transmitted instantaneously, so there's no point to destroying it. What do you mean there's no point? This model causes his trouble just by existing. Cass, you should tone down your voice. The shockwaves from your voice are hitting the Sorel. Seriously, what's the point of this thing? You're just putting the Sorel in more danger of being destroyed. Uh, my stomach's starting to hurt. It's actually a pretty funny item. Uh, floating city cathode. This should be interesting. I'm feeling nostalgic just looking at this. I'm sure. I felt that way quite a bit while building it. Then this really is Yumenotama? Yes, this is modeled after Yumenotama from Rasiella. I call it the Colonia Cathode. Of course, I didn't just build it for purposes of nostalgia. I made its performance as high as possible. I think it would enhance weapons further than any other. I see, that's good, right Delta? Delta, what's wrong? Cass, you said you feel nostalgic looking at this, right? I just figured I might have known about this Yumenotama place in that case. Oh, right. <laughs> Looks like I was right. I've been trying to think about it, but I can't remember a thing. I don't feel any nostalgia at all. Sorry, Delta, I wasn't thinking about your feelings. You don't need to apologize, it's my fault for forgetting about it. I might have forgotten about it, but just knowing that it sh should be a nostalgic place to me is enough. Really? Yeah, and even if it doesn't feel nostalgic, it's still pretty. 
When I'm not using it as a cathode, we could still enjoy looking at it. <laughs> I can't guarantee any uses for it besides as a cathode, but... I'm glad that you think that a memorable place like this is pretty. <laughs> Thanks. I'll ask Cass sometime to tell me more about Yumenotama. And that looks like that's it. And we still haven't gotten that trophy for synthesizing with Sarli. You would think we'd be pretty close, because we've already gotten the one for Tatoria. Which, um, I guess it's this one here, Science Girl, synthesize many items with Sarli. We've gotten the one with Tatoria, but not Sarli yet, which is odd, because I got the one for Tatoria in, like, uh, Phase 2, so it's odd that it still hasn't popped yet, but... Hey Cass, do you wash your own clothes? Obviously, although I don't have any of the washing machines I'm used to at home, so it's not easy. Yeah, and you wash my clothes too, huh? Because if I don't do it, then you'd be wearing the same dirty clothes every day, right? Well, you know how to do laundry too, Cass. You're actually much more adept to chores in the house than I originally thought. I would love to know exactly how you perceive me in the past. But why are you asking me about laundry? Don't tell me the new recipe is somehow related to it. No, that's not it. I actually just realized I'm even worse at laundry than I am at cooking. That's a surprise. Not really, Sarley's pretty clumsy when it comes to these things. I hate to admit it, but it's true. But I do know how to operate a washing machine, and hanging the wet clothes outside is no big deal. It's just, when you're done washing the clothes, you have to hang them, right? Well, if you don't, you'll be left with a bunch of wrinkled clothes. That's the part I can't do. When I fold the clothes, I can't get the creases quite right, and after a few attempts, they're wrinkled. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, despite being clumsy, you're sort of a perfectionist. I don't see why it's such a big deal if they're slightly off, not like you can see them once you wear them. It's important to compromise sometimes, too. Compromise? <laughs> I suppose for someone not suited to romance. That might not be a bad idea. Here she goes again! How is laundry and romance connected? You don't follow. Once intimate with, the, with your partner, laundry can be equally, if not more important than cooking. Cleaning dirty clothes is that important? It's a symbolic gesture, washing away the dirt of one's day so it doesn't remain when starting the next one. And putting on nicely folded clothes is the key to devoting oneself to their job. If a woman wishes to be married, they must execute this task perfectly to support their husbands. Nonetheless, the moment I realized I wasn't capable of this, the idea of romance sounded even more ridiculous. I don't even know where you're getting these ideas anymore. I don't think guys care as much as you think. Cass folds my clothes, but I don't check if they're perfect. See what I mean? No matter how hard I try, guys don't even have a clue. <sighs> Perhaps I should start paying more attention starting today. And besides, certainly, you don't strike me as the stay-at-home wife type, married or not. If and when that happen, does happen, I think you two will both be working. You can share the chores with each other. That's blasphemy. What? Listen, Cass. Men hate all types of chores, and have a tendency to avoid them at all costs. Of course, in a double income situation, they'll help out out of necessity, but... But what do you think will happen to the wife if he finds out she has no clue how to do any chores? Uh, nothing? Yeah, it's not like you're messing around on purpose. Oh. No, it is not that simple. I can see the husband boiling with rage already, the spark to a war. And then the next question becomes, do you live separately in the same house, or get a divorce? At any rate, there's no promising future awaiting that couple. I can't say I've met anyone who thinks as negatively as you do. But when she makes her case, it's somehow difficult to disagree. <sighs> Why is that? I guess romance and I are just not meant to be. Well, I wouldn't really overthink it if I were you. <laughs> oh, Sarley. Alright, let's 
get our next recipe here. <sighs> Sighing again, though I suppose I can already figure out what happened. What happened? Cooking. I was trying to grill a fish, but it was surprisingly difficult. Before I knew it, I was staring at a pile of charcoal. I thought following the cookbooks would help me make something somewhat edible, perhaps not with me. Snap out of it already! It's depressing watching you! How many more times do you have to insist you're not meant to fall in love, huh? Every reason you've mentioned so far, while true to a degree, are all extreme examples. Try to imagine how we feel, listening to one ridiculous claim after another. Cass, I get where you're coming from, but try to understand Sarley's point of view too. I can do that, once, maybe twice, but now I'm at my limit. Right now, you're just trying to find a convenient excuse to run away from love. What? You're afraid of actually falling in love, so you'll look for each and every excuse to weasel your way out. No. Cass, what you're suggesting is wrong. I'm not running away from anything. I think it's safe to say anyone would agree with me that you're running away right now. I'm not. To prove it, I've been testing my skills to see how viable a steady relationship actually is. It's not like I'm giving up before I try, so how can you not consider this a fair attempt? If you think your tests are a good re enough reason to give up, then I suggest you think again. In fact, it's like I'm watching you create excuses to run away. It's too sad to think about. That's just the difference in perception. I'm conducting scientific tests to see if romance is possible. And you go accusing me of running away. I've had enough of this. Then tell me, how come you didn't give up the moment you realized you couldn't succeed at one thing? When you saw you couldn't cook worth a damn, you said romance wasn't for you, right? You should have had your answer already, yet here I find you trying to do laundry or cooking again. If you keep on telling yourself it can't be done, yet on the flip side, try and try again, it's pathetic. With all your contradictions, the only conclusion I can draw is that you're actually running away. If I were in your shoes, you'd say the same to me. Enough. I get it. I've heard enough. Cass, you're right. I've obviously been contradicting myself. And it seems I've shown you a rather unpleasant side of me, so I apologize. There's no need for that. Yeah, you probably just have a lot on your mind and got a little worried. I mean, I'm totally okay with that. In fact, it's a little girly, and personally, I think it's appropriate. Delta, your perception of femininity is quite skewed. Remind me to correct it at some point. Anyway, now you understand, right? Don't say it's impossible for you to fall in love. Yeah, I won't. And don't think about it either, because all your conclusions are based on extreme examples. No, as far as that's concerned, I don't think I'm wrong. Perhaps I've contradicted myself, that I admit. But I don't think I'm wrong to feel romance is not for me. Are you serious? Yeah, I am. I truly believe I can't fall in love. That's why I don't want to talk about this anymore. My pride won't let me fall lower than I already have. Fine, be that way. Hey, you can't end things that way. What? Sarley's made up her mind, obviously, so there's nothing I can say to change it. If she really thinks that she can't fall in love, who are we to say otherwise? Well, even so... Delta, I appreciate the effort, but don't waste your breath. It's for the best. I myself have accepted that romance is not for me, so I gave up. Further discussion would not solve anything. Yeah, it would be pointless, Delta. Let's go home t for today. Okay. Hmm. Phew, another long day's work. I'm so beat. Let's go rest, yeah? Hey, Cass, what's the matter? Delta, sorry, but could you get started without me? What's gotten into you? I think I forgot something. Where? Want me to come with? Just go to sleep already, got it? Okay, but be careful, whatever it is you do. Hmm. I wonder if she's gonna get Shirataka, but they haven't met yet, so... Continue searing on high until the surface begins to char, and then add spices. 
Hmm, I did everything right. Why isn't it working? <sighs> I'll save cooking for later. I'll try my luck with presentation. I take the knife. If you don't want to lose a finger, I suggest you stop right there. Cass. Shh. Have you already forgotten your clumsiness? You could lose a finger trying to sculpt with a knife. What are you doing here, at this hour? And where's Delta? Yeah, I left Delta behind. I'm sure he fell asleep, not even knowing I stepped out. I can't say I approve of a lady walking alone at night. What's wrong with you? I came to check up on you, obviously. I figured you'd be crying yourself to sleep about right, or right about now, with the cookbook spread open. I thought I made myself clear. I'm giving up. I never thought you would, no matter how impossible it seemed to you. You're not the type to give up easily. How long do you think we've known each other, really? So you saw through everything, then. <laughs> you caught me. It was a lucky guess. But from the looks of it, you're at your wit's end? Yeah, I think it's the first time in my life I've encountered a problem I can't solve. I knew I wasn't good at it, but I didn't think I would be this bad. I'll be honest, a part of me really does feel like this is the end. Sarley, you said you were good with machines, right? More accurately, information, but yes. And I guess this talent of yours left no room for housework left in that massive brain. So it would seem. Why do you think you can't fall in love unless you can master housework? I'm sure you have your logic, but you should know there are plenty of happy families, housework or not. So why are you ignoring that? I'm not ignoring anything. I gathered the information and did my research on what romance is. And I remember clearly what I read. It's not uncommon for haphazard housework to be the cause for friction. As long as I'm going to fall in love, I don't want to fail. So you want to say you've collected a lot of data, right? Could you tell me exactly where you obtained this information? Don't tell me you read it in some book. I did read a book titled Anyone Can Become a Good Housewife, but that's not just it. I joined communities where married couples gather and asked a lot of questions too. Are you sure those people were married and didn't just think they were? I suppose that's a possibility. You poor thing, and you took all the information you gathered there at face value? Of course, I exercised that possibility as well. But a lot of them had similar problems to what was described in the book, so it made me think. Even then, if you've seen these communities since Rasiella, surely you thought to doubt the information. But even before that, I think you're going to the wrong places for information. I know, I know that. But I don't know what else to do either. I was so happy after talking to you that I could once more find enjoyment from romance again. But I had no idea how to realize these feelings. I was worried. If this is about Shirataka, then you're really overthinking it. You have so many things in common. No, I don't just want... I don't want it to just be about that. So what if we talk about our hobbies all night long? He's about the only person I can do that with. Heh. <laughs> and if we're talking about a G2-tron, then maybe all night wouldn't be enough. But that doesn't make us a couple or lovers or partners, just two people with the same hobby. You don't like that? Well, of course I like it. No one else can keep up with what I want to talk about. But... But I'm a girl too, after all. It's... Is it that wrong to want to talk about things that make my heart race? Calm down for a sec. No one said you couldn't. I don't think it's wrong for you to feel that way. In fact, I'm amazed it took you this long. What I can't understand is how that turns into you thinking you can't fall in love with if you can't do chores. I've already said this, but I'm truly a beginner when it comes to this sort of thing. So I thought if I forced myself to do things, I could begin to understand how it works. But you can see how far that's gotten me. I can tell that you've tried really, really hard, and the old you probably wouldn't force anything. I just wished you'd talk to me before talking to those strangers. 
I wanted to, but... But what? Hmm. Right, well, I suppose that was expected. It's not that I didn't trust you that much. I want you to understand. It would be a problem if you trusted me too much, too. You really shouldn't overthink things, Charlie. There's no manual for love, and definitely no sure way to win. If there was, every couple would be the same, don't you think? Yeah, I guess you have a point. According to the information I've gathered, you and Delta don't fit any example. Well, yeah, well, as you can see, there are so many different shapes and forms in this world. Even if it doesn't sound romantic, if there's a common topic you can enjoy, I think that's better. There's no reason for you to try too hard when you're with Shirataka. You're perfect just the way you are. You should cheer up, as hard as that might sound right now. <laughs> if it were that easy, we wouldn't be talking. Yeah, a part of me knows I'm overthinking this, but it's so hard to accept. I never imagined I would get so depressed over a few house chores. It's a difficult problem. Yeah, it is. So much that it's painful. Almost unbearingly so. Sorry. Please, help me. I don't know what else I can do. But I want to be confident and know that I can fall in love if the chance presented itself. So please, Cass, I want you to help me. That's a different problem to solve. Give Sarley, the girl who can't do chores, confidence for love? <laughs> it doesn't have to be right this second. But if you think of anything, then I hope you would. If I think of something, I'll let you know. What? Already? I keep telling you not to overthink things. This is actually a really simple problem. Now listen, you know the quickest way to a man's heart is his stomach, right? Yeah, but cooking is really not my thing. Just leave that up to me. No matter how bad you are at cooking, I've got the perfect recipe that cannot fail. Sunny side up. You don't need a recipe for that. This one uses knives and a pot. Don't worry. I'm sure you can make this one. Have you ever made it before, Cass? Yes, I make it all the time. Which is exactly why I can say with confidence, this is really easy to make well. Do you want to give it a shot? I'll buy a lot of ingredients just so we can practice. Let's start right away. Perfect, I'll make the preparations. Yeah, say Cass. Hmm? Thank you, really. <laughs> well, now that you thank me, I really can't fail, can I? That was a really, really long scene. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, so we're getting a little more insight into Sarley's background. Um, I guess we'll continue on with Sarley, see if there's more... But we'll do that next time. We'll take a little break here now, and we'll see if we can wrap up Starly's little side story here. So until then, thanks for watching.